Well, thank you all for, for coming today. Uh, you know, I think where we're at today, uh, you can go to the first floor rotunda and look up what's in, etched in stone. And it, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I think that's a perfect example of the leadership that we've seen from the Republican leadership. As, as we just witnessed with this press conference, a, a leader that, that has no vision, has no drive, has no plan to get anything done, just knee-jerk reactions and it just allowing us to, to go through the process and hoping things work out. That's not leadership. That's failed leadership. You know, I, I've heard this saying of if, if you think you're leading and no one's following, guess what? You're just taking a walk. And that's all that we see out of this leadership. We see temper tantrums, you know, statesman of the year, temper tantrum adjourning at three o'clock in the afternoon when we could be getting big things done like education. We could be getting things done in this platform. We all just attended the, the Republican caucuses. By the thousands, people came out and, and we voiced our concerns and they voiced what they wanted the, the Republicans to do. And who lost handedly? It was Nikki Haley. And I think we're being led by Nikki Haley Republicans that, that are do nothing Republicans that just want to be here and do nothing and, and get the accolades from the lobby corps while, while everybody is fervoring forward leadership and to get big, bold items done. We've laid out exactly what the Republican Party platform is, and that's what we're trying to do in advance. Uh, we passed the halfway mark this week, and, and if it wasn't for us, this group here, putting forth IP reform uh, to, to get through this chamber, it never would have got done. And, and I believe, and we believe, the plan was to kill it all along. Uh, so we've had to drag this leadership kicking and screaming, and we see the temper tantrums weekly, unfortunately, or we're going to dinner, or we're going to this or that and getting out early instead of doing what the Senate's supposed to be doing and getting stuff done. Uh, this week, we did get a couple little uh, light things done. We were able to get through the, the property tax fix through uh, Luke DeMeyer's bill, uh, Curtis Trent, also had one with the evictions that we saw uh, through COVID uh, to be able to protect uh, the property owners from having to, to allow people to squat on their property uh, in perpetuity until a court uh, allows them to do that. We, we wanted to fix that. So we were able to get a few uh, wins. Gold and silver, we were able to, to get through. The, the ban on the, the central bank digital currency you know, there are little wins, but it, it's stuff that we're having to, to push, kicking and screaming. Uh, but if that's what it takes to get, you know, these these red things done, just as what we saw this weekend with the caucuses, uh, let, let's remember that that 100 percent of the people now want and, and elected uh, to have the nominee for President Trump. They want that bold leadership, and that's exactly what we represent within the Republican Party. Uh, so we're going to continue to fight and push back, uh, uh, pushing education reform, uh, illegal immigration, uh, everything we can do to, to advance uh, the cause that we, we continue to fight for. So happy to answer any questions or if anybody else has anything they want to add. I'm curious to hear perhaps from Senator Kennedy about what are the key elements that have to remain in that uh, education plan. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, from my standpoint, um, you know, I'm 100 committed to providing options for parents. Um, that's what parents need um, is options to educate their child. Um, and, and I think academic outcomes improve when you provide those options. Most of the vast majority of studies show that. Um, I do have a hard line as far as I do not want to, uh, I will not allow um, DESE to control the program. Um, I, I think that would be a disaster for the program. And so I want the state treasurer to retain power over that. Um, now, as far as transparency, I'm definitely open to providing more transparency of the program, maybe forcing um, you know, a portal where some of the stuff can be put on a web page, or if there's a board in collaboration, um, can make suggestions. Um, but I don't, I'm not gonna allow DESE to have control over the, over the program. Uh, Senator, I wanna ask about open enrollment. I didn't see it in the bill. Is there going to be open enrollment? Yeah, there's no, I have no plan to add open enrollment to the bill. Have you ever requested records from the treasurer's office? We have. What was the result of that? It was uh, similar to what we saw, what we heard from the minority party. Uh, it was not good information that we received. Um, and so obviously I think they should be more forthcoming in providing that information. And I have no problem you know, providing language in the bill that would require that. But yet you want to keep it under 
under the treasurer's office? Yeah, because I, I because I, the reason why I want it in the treasurer's office because um, we need someone promoting the program. And when you have um, the Department of Education who would be hostile towards choice, um, I think that would be a very bad situation. What do you think of the four-day, five-day school week issue? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're working through that. That is likely to be part of the package. In what form? I don't want to speak about what form. Um, there's a, a number of different versions out there that are being discussed right now. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely working with all sides to try to come to a resolution on the, on the four day. I have a question for either Hoskins, Brett, and I go, I think I got them all. Do you just want us all to answer I'm not one sure. Time. <laughs> uh, just about the, the crime bill. Why you voted down the crime bill today. The, the large Luke DeMeyer had Blair's Law and Max's Law, stuff like that. So the Blair's Law, that's, that's one thing that I, I really have issue. I think there needed to be more protections in there for, for people. I, I live in uh, Cass County, south of Jackson, and, and Jackson has a lot of rural area, and I think we needed to put more protection for people that are in those rural areas surrounded by these uh, cities, as well as Max's Law. I mean, I, I sponsored a bill to increase penalties for those who do harm uh, the, the dogs, but, but the way this was written is, is if a, a dog is potentially injured and has to receive uh, veterinary care. Well, any dog handler is going to take their dog to a vet if there's an occurrence automatically. Well, you're automatically deemed a felon at, at that. I think that's a, a terrible precedent to, to set. Uh, again, they are a, a tool that are that is deployed by the officers that they would never send an, uh, an actual human officer into that, that position uh, like they do with a dog. So they're sent into these, these type of situations. Uh, I was a county auditor and you list them as uh, an asset just like you do any other piece of equipment. So uh, I know everybody wants to associate their, their pets with, with these, but these are working animals that are doing uh, jobs that they uh, other, you know, normally wouldn't be doing. And again, they're a tool. Uh, but I, I do agree with some sort of increased penalty, but, but not to, to the felon, felony uh, right out of the gate like it does. Anybody else? Before we step away, Senator Bratton, you said that you want to protect, you have rural people that you want to protect. Does that mean the people shooting off the gun? What, what did you mean by that? The rural people that you want to protect? And what so like, you know, the, the parameters that were put in place so you couldn't be charged with something, uh, like if you're shooting, it had to be like commercial, uh, you know, target practice and, and that sort of thing. Well, if you own a, a, a hefty amount of uh, acreage, you have your own and, and have kids shooting, you know, they, there's a potential there. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that was, you know, shored up and it wasn't. So that that's where I just I thought it only involved shooting in or into a municipality. Well, that's that's that is exactly what I'm talking about. Lee Summit that that I grew up in is one of the largest land masses in all of, of the state of Missouri. It's the third largest and has a plethora of, of massive land masses uh, or you know plots of land that can be utilized for you know, gun ranges or, or so on and so forth. I have a gun range on my home with 40 acres uh, that my kids regularly shoot on uh, and, and partake in uh, shooting activities. So I wanna make sure that we were able to protect that and it didn't. So, anybody else? Senator Bratton, um, this week the House uh, took care of their landfill bill. I remember last year you and Senator Schroer were, weren't aligned. Have you um, been with that yet? <laughs> I I believe, uh, you know, we're, we're solid on that. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I think, I, I hope, uh, I'll let him speak for himself, but I, I hope we have to shake hands. Right yeah. <laughs> are, we, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, no, we'll be, be fighting as soon as I get the opportunity. If I get the opportunity to, to have uh, something I can even add a landfill amendment to, I, I will. It's just something that has a very narrow title and, and you know, section of law. So it's a difficult bill to be able to, to hang on to a bunch of uh, things. But if I see that opportunity, I'll, I'll do it in any way, shape, or form to, to protect my community. What role does the, um, the company hiring like more than 15 lobbyists play in this debate? I think it plays a huge debate. I mean, otherwise, this thing would have been a, a non-issue, and, and I believe we would have basically had unanimous support. But when you have an army of lobbyists, uh, you know, misrepresenting exactly what's going on in my community uh, about saying it's property rights and infringing on business or getting in the middle of, uh, you know, a business venture, 
win you know or moving the ball in the middle of the the game uh what about the thousands of people that bought their property have you know everything that they've invested in you know having that moved in the middle of their game so uh, i think that would have been easy and actually is easy it, but for uh, an army of lobbyists you know saying otherwise so i think that's probably the biggest reason why it's not law now i asked the minority party and the um and caleb Rudd. so i want to ask you guys as well any thoughts on governor parson commuting Britt reed last friday um no, thank you. Uh, yeah, I obviously disagreed with uh, Governor Parsons' decision on that. Uh, my stance on this is uh, pretty clear. I think individuals that drink and drive and end up harming for a lifetime five-year-old little girls ought to serve their sentences. So I think it was very unfortunate. It's another bad decision by Governor Parson, and I think it's going to be very difficult for him to maintain a legacy of a law and order governor uh, when he's letting criminals out of jail early uh, when they've caused a lot of harm to the community. Generally, what is what would your philosophy be as governor toward clemency? You saw Governor Parson really um, become active with regard to those requests. Well, it's it's hard to make a comment that would encompass every possible uh, every possible clemency request. But I would say that I'm generally a guy that believes that uh, if you commit a crime, you should serve out the sentence that you're given by uh, the court of your, the court that you're tried in or a court of your peers. So that's going to be the guiding principle. Well, I think it allows the people that you're you're reporting for to be able to see the vision and, and exactly what we're we're trying to accomplish. And when you have uh, leadership that's not showing leadership, not being bold in, in what they're you know trying to direct that caucus in, into achieving. I think it shows exactly the type of leadership uh, that we're getting. And it's not leadership. That's why it's vacant leadership is what we're receiving. So uh, I think it's just a proof in the pudding of, of exactly what we've been experiencing and why we formed and, and why we're as loud as we are is because of what we've, you know, the past. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.